These are the diseases of the immune system. It is divided into systemic and uh, local or localized immune disorders. For systemic, we have lupus or your SLE, your systemic lupus erythematous. And then rheumatoid arthritis, your Sjogren's syndrome, and then your systemic sclerosis or we uh, usually call it your scleroderma. For local immune diseases, we have your Hashimoto thyroiditis, your <clears throat> autoimmune hemolytic anemia, multiple sclerosis, <clears throat> good pasture syndrome, myasthenia gravis, and then your Graves diseases. Although there are still a lot of autoimmune diseases, but these are just some of the most common that we will be discussing in radiologic pathology. So please do not think that um, because the names of some of these systemic autoimmune diseases seem to be localized only to certain areas, like for example, your Hashimoto thyroiditis, it does not necessarily mean that the autoimmune disorder is um, only localized on that specific area, like sa thyroid, no? Because uh, our thyroid produces hormones, and these hormones, their effect is systemic. So, although at first, <clears throat> these diseases are localized, uh, during the course of the disease, all of the major organs in the body will also be uh, affected. So, for example, like the joints, salivary area, or the salivary glands, or the skin, do not think that they are not systemic diseases because most of them have a, a systemic effect or systemic changes in the body of our patient. So, I hate you autoimmune diseases. This is for your systemic lupus erythematous. For SLE, your hallmark sign, when we say hallmark sign, we are talking about its pathognomonic sign or a sign that is different from others. For example, when uh, you see a person with uh, butterfly rashes on the face, you will automatically, automatically think that this patient has SLE or your systemic lupus erythematous. Okay? So this is the hallmark sign or the pathognomonic sign for your SLE. Systemic lupus erythematous is a chronic, chronic autoimmune disease in which the body's immune system becomes hyperactive and attacks normal, healthy tissues. This results in symptoms such as inflammation, swelling, and damage to joints, skin, kidneys, blood, the heart, and lungs of our patient. Under normal function, the immune system makes proteins called your antibodies in order to protect and fight against antigens such as your viruses and bacteria. But what happens when your patient has systemic lupus erythematous? Lupus makes the immune system unable to differentiate. Unable to differentiate between your antigens, a substance capable of inducing a specific response, and your healthy tissue. So our body uh, is unable to differentiate between antigen and healthy tissues. This leads to our immune system directing our antibodies against healthy tissues. So our own body is fighting our own tissue. Not just antigens, but it also causes swelling, pain, and tissue damage. So any part of the body can be affected by lupus as it has an array of clinical manifestations affecting the skin, joints, brain, lungs, kidney, blood vessels, and other internal organs. So there is something wrong with our body. Our own body is attacking our own immune, uh, our, is attacking our own tissue, our own skin, joint, brain, lungs, kidney, and other major organs in the body. So since this is an autoimmune disorder, the uh, the source 
or the origin of this disease is unknown. Chronic inflammatory disease occurs when your body's immune system attacks your own tissues and organs and the etiology is unknown. Again, the hallmark sign for this um, autoimmune disorder is your butterfly rash. Signs and symptoms for your systemic lupus erythematous. Patient will feel fatigue and fever, joint pain, stiffness and swelling. Again, for the hallmark sign, butterfly shape rash on the face that covers the cheeks and bridge of the nose. Skin lesions will also appear or worsen with sun exposure or patient will have photosensitivity. Fingers and toes will turn white or blue when exposed to cold or during stressful periods. We call this as your Reynolds phenomenon. And your Reynolds phenomenon is uh, actually very, ano siya, very uh, prominent siya among women. Especially if you try to uh, put your hand on the refrigerator, so my fridge, and then after some time, especially sa mga especially in women your hand the small arteries that supply blood to your skin will narrow and this will limit blood circulation to your affected areas this is known as your vasospasm there will also be shortness of breath your patient will complain of chest pain or angina patient will also suffer from dry eyes and also, there will be headaches, confusion, and memory loss. So, lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease uh, in which the body's immune system becomes hyperactive to attack normal, healthy tissues. The main problem with lupus, again, is that the body cannot differentiate antigen from normal tissues. So, this antigen attacks our own body. <clears throat> We have here an uh, image of your SLE or the effect of SLE in the human body. So for example, it's a mouth. Patient with SLE will suffer from mouth and nose ulcerations. Skin, butterfly rash, and red patches. So heart, patient will suffer from endocarditis. There will also be plaque deposits, so your atherosclerosis, inflammation of the fibrous sac of the heart. Patient will also suffer from severe abdominal pain. Uh, with regards to blood, there will be anemia and high blood pressure. Muscles and joints will have pain, arthritic changes or aches in the joints. The joints will also be swollen. For the lungs, there will be pleuritis, pneumonitis, there will be pulmonary emboli, there will also be pulmonary hemorrhage. For kidneys, there will be systemic changes also, like there will be blood in the urine. For, um, for the accessory organ, there will also be hair loss. Patient will suffer from fever and abnormal headache so that's why sle is systemic because uh, a lot of our organs are affected so treatment for your sle so we advise our patient to consult a dermatologist for the treatment of malar rash or the skin rash or any other facial rashes since facial skin is usually very sensitive in nature, especially if my exposure to sun, it is very sensitive. If a patient with SLE is exposed to the sun, it is not just butterfly rash. Ang, ang buong mukha ng patient natin ay mamumula. So, we advise also our patient to wear sunscreen lotions with your sun protection factor with an SPF of not less than 30 in order to be protected from harmful UV rays. And we also advise our patient to avoid sunlight exposure as much as possible. So, 
um, when wearing our SPF or your sun protection factor, guys, uh, actually, nakadepende yan kung ano ang complexion ng skin mo. For example, if you have fair skin, um, olive skin, or dark skin. So, if you have fair skin or maputi ka, so, dapat uh, 10 minutes lang yung sun exposure mo. Kasi you have little melanin in your body. If you have olive skin, like medyo brown, so your sun exposure should be limited to only 15 minutes. And if you have dark skin, sun exposure is for 20 minutes only. So, uh, how do you compute for your SPF no? or how do you compute for the amount or the length of time na effective yung lotion na ginagamit natin? When do we apply or uh, kailang, kailan natin need mag reapply So, for example, um, kailangan natin i-note kung ano yung SPF ng lotion natin. For example, yung nakalagay sa bote is 20. For example, no SPF 20. So, you calculate your protection time and the amount of time that you can stay outside uh, before uh, before uh, being exposed to the harmful UV rays. So, do you multiply your uh, sun safety time, yung kanina, yung 15, uh, 20, and 10 minutes, no? You multiply it, say, yung skin type with the SPF listed on your sunscreen. So, for example, if you, if you are mapote, if you have fair skin, so, 10 minutes, and then you multiply it, for example, sa SPF, sa bote, sa bote nyo na 20, so 10 times 20, ay, sorry, ah, uh, yes, uh, for example, 10 times 20, so you have 200 minutes of sun exposure na magiging effective yung ating lotion. So, that's approximately ilang oras, 20 200. So, you have 3 hours of sun exposure na magiging effective yung SPF natin. After 3 hours, you have to reapply again. If you have, for example, naman yung olive skin o um, between, siya, ano, siya, between brown and fair complexion, so you have 15 minutes of sun exposure. So, 15 times 20, you have 300 minutes or approximately, that's 5 hours of sun protection. So, your olive skin, uh, for patients with olive skin, using a sunscreen with SPF 20, can, uh, under ideal conditions, stay in the sun for up to 5 hours. And then, up after 5 hours, you have to reapply your SPF again. So, yung mga, for example, yung mga SPF 15 na mga lotion, it blocks approximately mga 93% of UVB rays. Yung mga SPF 30, 97% yung nabablock na UVB rays. So, the more, the more na tumataas yung SPF natin, mas tumataas din yung level ng sun protection. So, for example, kung 98% uh, percent para sa SPF 50, and then, yung mga SPF 100, yun yung mga SPF 99. And, you also advise your patient, no? So, uh, aside from wearing your SPF lotion, you should, uh, your patient should also use protection sa kanyang skin, like wearing of clothes, uh, pagdadala ng hat, um, seeking shade, and also try to staying out of the sun during mga peak hours like 9, 10 a.m. in the morning until 4 p.m. Masakit na kasi yung, uh, masyado ng harsh yung sun rays. So, 10 to 4, 4 p, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is not advisable for anyone to go out under the sun. And then, you have your steroidal creams. So, ano yung effect ng mga steroidal creams natin? Application of steroidal creams prescribed by the doctor helps in reducing the inflammation involved in case of malarash and may even provide relief from itching, 
should uh, malar rash occur. So, yung mga steroidal creams natin, guys, they are actually drugs that are um, geared towards reducing the inflammation only. So, suppressing the immune system, it will also prevent mga flare-ups, yung mga rashes, and yung itching. This will also control some of the symptoms and to minimize organ damage. Again, yung mga steroidal creams natin, usually, um, they are immunosuppressant. Diba yung problem natin with systemic lupus erythematos is because our system is hyperactive. So, gagawin natin siyang, i-normalize natin siya para hindi siya masyado maging hyperactive, para walang mga signs and symptoms of a patient with SLE. But the problem naman, when using your um, your uh, immune suppressant or your uh, yung, yung mga steroidal creams natin, is uh, masyado namang uh, bumababa yung ating immune system. Aside, aside, from, aside from that, magiging exposed din tayo sa mga bacteria, sa mga viruses, and little amounts of these bacteria and viruses can already cause us our health. So, while taking, <clears throat> while taking steroidal creams, we have to advise our patient to limit exposure to the outside environment para hindi ma-affectuan yung kanyang immune system. Alternative home remedies for uh, soothing the skin, applying vitamin E, olive oil, and even a pinch of baking soda on the affected area since it reduces the irritation and pain involved. Also, we advise our patient that one may take a bath using oatmeal ingredients in warm water. We also apply fresh aloe vera gel on the affected area so to allow the fast and effective healing of butterfly rash. So, lupus fact number one, basically, my immune system is making antibodies that would normally fight infections and illnesses. But instead, my immune system is busy attacking my own organ. So, sino yung, so this is Elena Gomez. Siya yung pinakasikat na advocate ng uh, systemic lupus erythematos. Not just an advocate, but she is also suffering from SLE. So, yung uh, masyado ng advance yung SLE niya. And uh, she was advised by her doctor to have a kidney transplant. So, yung best friend niya yung nag-donate ng kidney sa kanya. Because hindi na masyado nagpa-function yung kidney niya kasi uh, affected na yung mga tubules ng kanyang kidney. She is already urinating a lot of blood, hindi na mafi-filter yung mga uh, unwanted or yung mga toxins sa katawan niya because hindi na gumagana si kidney. That's why uh, nag-donate yung best friend niya sa kanya ng kidney. Next is your RA. RA is also known as your rheumatoid arthritis. What is the problem with rheumatoid arthritis? This is again an autoimmune disorder where our own immune system mistakenly attacks our own body's tissues. A chronic inflammatory disorder that can affect more than just the joints. In some people, the condition also can damage a wide variety of body systems, including the skin, the eyes, lungs, heart, and blood vessels, not only just the joints of our bones. Pwede din niyang ma-affectuan yung skin, yung eyes, lungs, heart, and blood vessels. And like the wear and tear damage of osteoarthritis, your RA affects the lining of the joints, causing painful swelling that can eventually result in bone erosion and joint deformity. So, tandaan natin na 
your osteoarthritis is the only medical term in the dictionary that has an itis but without inflammation. The inflammation associated with RA is what can damage other parts of the body as well. While new types of medications have improved treatment options dramatically, severe RA can still cause physical disabilities. So, this affects all of the joints in the human body. Aside from the joints, this will also affect the skin, eyes, lungs, heart, and blood vessels. Or in other words, our RA is systemic. <clears throat> Because aside from affecting our joints, our RA can also affect our connective tissues. And these connective tissues are abundant in different parts of our body. They, we have here an image of a normal versus an arthritic joint. So a normal joint here is on my left side. And then... A bone with osteoarthritis. So, ano ang problema kay osteoarthritis? That's what I have said kanina. <clears throat> osteoarthritis has no inflammation. Anong nangyayari? Yung cartilage in between, yun yung nag, uh, numinipis. Okay? It becomes thinner. And this will cause pain sa ating patient. Pero walang inflammation. Yung problem naman with RA is yung synovial membrane is swollen, there is also bone erosion. At ito ang problem with rheumatoid arthritis. So, ano ang causes? RA occurs when your immune system attacks the synovium. Our synovium is the lining of the membrane surrounding our joint. The resulting inflammation will thicken the synovium which can eventually destroy the cartilage and bone within the joint. The tendons and ligaments that hold the joint together weaken and stretch. So gradually, the joint loses its shape and alignment. Symptoms of a patient suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. <clears throat> Tender, warm, swollen joints. Joint stiffness that is usually worse in the morning and after inactivity. There is fatigue fever, and weight loss. Early RA tends to affect the smaller joint first. So usually, makikita siya sa fingers and then sa toes. So as this disease progresses, symptoms often spread to the wrist, knees, ankles, elbows, hips, and shoulders. RA signs and symptoms may vary in severity and may even come and go over time. Your RA can cause joints to deform and shift out of place. So, joints affected by RA, at first, yung mga proximal interphalangeal joint lang muna, pip, pip joint, and then your MCP joints of the hands, the wrist, the shoulders, the elbows, and then the knees, ankles, and the metatarsophalangeal joints of the feet. This will also affect the distal interphalangeal joints. But in most cases, some of the patients uh, hindi siya affected ng uh, hindi affected ng RA, yung distal in your distal interphalangeal joint. Although some patients may complain, yung ibang patient kasi meron silang, uh, <coughs> merong mga signs na affected din yung distal interphalangeal joint. While most of the patients do not complain of this, instead yung kinakomplain nila is yung pain sa pip joint at saka sa MCP. So at first, ito lang muna yung affected ng ating rheumatoid arthritis until such time that other parts of the body with connected tissue are already affected like skin, eyes, and other organs. And then diagnosis for your rheumatoid arthritis can be very difficult bucket because at these early stages, maliit lang kasi yung mga symptoms niya. Maliit lang yung mga signs that may, 
that, that may mimic other uh, bone uh, problem na hindi siya madidetect agad. But there is one, uh, there is no one, no one blood test or physical finding to confirm the diagnosis. For imaging test, the doctor may recommend uh, yung conventional x-ray to help track the progression of rheumatoid arthritis in the joints over time. MRI and ultrasound tests can also help the doctor judge the severity of the disease in our body. So with regards to conventional radiography, what method is best utilized to demonstrate rheumatoid arthritis in our patient? Anong method ang ginagamit to demonstrate rheumatoid arthritis? So this is your PA oblique projection of the hand or the method is your Norgard method. Okay. So this is bilateral, dalawang hand, naka AP oblique, and the central ray is midway between the fifth MCP joint. Next, we have here classic hand signs for your rheumatoid arthritis. Classic hand sign or ano na rin siya, um, hallmark sign ng isang patient with your rheumatoid arthritis. There is ulnar deviation. Yung kamay ni patient is uh, more to the ulnar side, papuntang ulnar side. There is botonier deformity. There is also your swan neck deformity. And then, yung thumb this patient is shaped like letter C. And then there is MCP subluxation. So based on this image, this is a classic hand sign of a patient suffering from rheumatoid arthritis late stage, advanced stage na ng patient natin. So, again, ito yung classic hand sign niya. Naka letter Z, yung thumb ng patient. Your metacarpophalangeal joint, there is subluxation. The hand is deviated towards the ulnar side. There is botonier deformity. Diba? Ito yung mga ito yung mga uh, joints in between ng ating mga bones. So there should be buttons like this one. Ito wala na. So there is botonier deformity. And there is swan neck deformity of the fingers. So our botonier deformity there is this one. There is flexion contracture. Nag reflex yung pip joint natin. There is flexure of the proximal interphalangeal joint. While there is extension of our distal interphalangeal joint or the tip joint. Again, flexion right here and extension here. The button hole appears in the tendon which is placed open. Wala na kasing joint dyan or wala nang tendon. Their appearance apparently reminded surgeons of a button pull. Para siyang botones. And then you have here your swan neck deformity. What is swan neck deformity? There is hyperextension of your proximal interphalangeal joint. So because of this hyperextension, there is compensatory flexion right here of your distal interphalangeal joint. So, parang opposite siya ni botonier deformity. Kay botonier deformity, there is flexion right here sa proximal interphalangeal joint. While sa swan neck deformity, there is hyperextension of the pip joint. In the botonier deformity, there is um, extension of the distal interphalangeal joint. In swan neck deformity, there is compensatory flexion right here. 
So we have here another image of your botanier deformity. And this one is swan neck deformity. And then we have here a radiographic appearance of a patient suffering from your uh, late stage rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid Arthritis Convention. Next is Jogren Syndrome. What is Jogren Syndrome? This is a disorder identified by its two most common symptoms, your dry eyes and dry mouth. Mucous membranes and moisture secreting glands of the eyes and mouth are usually affected first, resulting in decreased production of tears and saliva. So they're for Sjogren's syndrome, your, patho your pathognomonic sign or your hallmark sign are your pathognomonic signs are dry eyes and dry mouth. So treatment focuses on relieving symptoms of dryness. So in 1933, Dr. Hendrik Sjogren described a syndrome consisting of a triad of keratoconjunct Divide sika or dry eyes, serostomia or dry mouth, and with addition of your RA. So, may dryness ka na ng eyes, may dryness ka na ng yung mouth, meron ka pang rheumatoid arthritis. So, you have your botone, you have your swan neck deformity, and other hallmark signs. Symptoms of a patient suffering from your Sjogren's syndrome. Again, your keratoconjunctivitis sica or your dry eyes may burn each or feel greedy as if there's sand in them. Then you have your dry mouth. Patient may feel like it's full of cotton, making it difficult to swallow or speak. Some people with Jogren syndrome also experience one or more of the following. There is joint pain, swelling and stiffness, swollen salivary glands, particularly um, the pair of salivary glands located behind the jaw and in front of the ears. There will be skin rashes or dry skin for women since affected yung mucous membrane. There will be vaginal dryness, persistent dry cough, and prolonged fatigue as felt by the patient. Sjogren syndrome, dry eyes resulting to damage to eye surface, and also dry mouth resulting in increased tooth decay. These are just some of the signs and symptoms of a patient suffering from your Sjogren syndrome. So dry eyes, there will be redness because masyadong irritated yung mata natin. And then yung dila ng patient natin nagka-crack because of less mucus production. Ano yung causes ng ating Sjogren syndrome? This is an autoimmune disorder. So, tandaan, basta autoimmune disorder, the cause is unknown. The immune system, again, mistakenly attacks our own body's cells and tissues. Scientists are uncertain why. Some people develop Sjogren syndrome. Ano yung mga complications for the signs and symptoms since our patient is suffering from dry mouth, there will be dental cavities because the saliva helps protect the teeth from bacteria that can cause cavities. The patient is more prone to developing cavities when the mouth is dry. Then we have yeast infections. People with Sjogren's syndrome are much more likely to develop oral thrush or a yeast infection in the mouth. For dry eyes or uh, your patient will be suffering from vision problems because dry eyes can lead to light sensitivity, blurred vision, and ulceration of the cornea. Some of the less common complications may affect the lungs, kidney, or liver. That's why tinawag din siyang systemic. 
inflammation may cause pneumonia, bronchitis, or other problems in the lungs. This may lead to problems with kidney function, may cause also hepatitis or cirrhosis of the liver. Lymph nodes can also be affected. A small percentage of people with Sjogren's syndrome develop cancer of the lymph nodes or lymphoma. The nerves may also develop numbness, tingling, and burning sensation of the hands and feet. This is also known as your peripheral neuropathy. Ano yung mga test and diagnosis natin to confirm our uh, Sjogren's syndrome? So first, the doctor may order blood tests. Presence of antibodies common in Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, evidence of inflammatory conditions. And then for indication of problems with liver and kidneys of our patient. For eye tests, the doctors can measure the dryness of the eyes with a test called your shimmer tear test in this test a small piece of filter paper is placed under the lower eyelid of our patient to measure tear production so this is your shimmer tear test strip and procedure normal amount of tear production so nilalagay siya sa ilalim ng mata ng patient Normal tear production is here until so 20. Possible shortage of tears, 10 to 15. And mag less than 10, there is insufficiency of tear production, which is uh, another confirmatory test that your patient has dry eyes. For imaging, so... Yung tinatawag natin sa yellowgram. This is the imaging procedure to diagnose conditions sa ating salivary gland. This procedure shows how much saliva flows in the mouth of our patient. We also have your salivary scintigraphy sa NUCMED. This nuclear medicine test involves IV injection of a radioactive isotope which is struck over the course of an hour to see how quickly it arrives in all of the salivary glands of our patient. And then we also have biopsy. The doctor may also want to do a lip biopsy to detect presence of clusters of inflammatory cells, which can indicate your Sjogren's syndrome. For this test, a small sliver of tissue is removed from the salivary gland located in the lips to examine it under the microscope. So, with regards sa ating tears na pala kanina, the basal tears only pause uh, when we sleep. Pag natutulog tayo, yung basal tears natin or yung nagpo-form ng ating luha, uh, naka-standby din siya or naka-sleep mode din. And then, it begins again the moment we wake up. The human body produces uh, an average amount of 1.2 ml, 1.2 ml of these continuous basal tears every day. These tears stain through the nose and through the nasal cavity. So again, tandaan, 1.2 ml of continuous basal tears each day. Less than that, it may already indicate dry eyes sa ating patient. So we have here your sialogram. And then you have here... Yes, sialogram, and then you have your scintigraphy, your salivary gland scan. <clears throat> so, yung areas here indicated 1 and 2, ito yung ating parotid gland. Areas 4 and 5, your SM gland, your submandibular glands. And then, so number three, you have your parotid gland, background for parotid gland. Number six, you have background for uh, submandibular glands and oral cavity. And then itong number seven, ito yung oral cavity ng ating patient. 
treatment and drugs. For medications, <clears throat> to increase production of saliva, drugs such as your, your pilocarpine or your salagen and evoxac or civimeline can increase the production of saliva and sometimes tears. To address specific complications, if you develop arthritic syndromes, diba, aside from dry eyes and dry mouth, the third symptom or the tri ang kasama nila sa triad syndrome is yung RA. So, for, uh, for arthritic symptoms, patients may benefit from your NSAIDs or your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or other arthritic medication. For prescription sa eye drops, it, uh, pwede ditong kailangan or it may be needed if over-the-counter drops aren't helpful. Yeast infections in the mouth should be treated with antifungal medication since yeast nga yung kanyang uh, problema. So, hindi pwede bigyan ng antibiotic si patient. So, yeast is a type of fungal infection. So, dapat antifungal din yung bibigay. We should also treat the system-wide symptoms suffered by our patient. So, bibigyan si patient ng tinatawag nating plaquenil or your hydroxychloroquine. This is a drug designed to treat malaria but is often helpful in treating your Sjogren's syndrome. Drugs that suppress the immune system or your immunosuppressants such as your methotrexate also may be prescribed. Pero again guys, tandaan, since this is uh, immune suppressant, our patient may be prone to other types of diseases. Yung mga immune suppressants natin guys, usually binibigay natin siya sa ating mga patients na uh, yung ng mga nag uh, ang tawag dito, yung parang yung nagre-receive ng mga organ, uh, yung nag-undergo ng organ transplant. Kasi para hindi ma-reject ng body nila yung uh, yung tinatransfer na organ sa kanila para hindi ma-reject. So, most of them, lifetime na yung pag-take ng ating uh, immune suppressants. That's why our patients na nagkaroon ng organ transplant, they are advised by their doctor to take good care of themselves na hindi sila magkasakit. Like for example, kahit yung mga simpleng uh, flu virus lang, they are advised against having it because pwedeng maging fatal yung results sa kanila kasi masyadong mababa yung kanilang immune system. For surgery, to relieve dry eyes, Patient may consider undergoing a minor surgical procedure to seal the tear ducts draining from the eyes. Collagen or silicon plugs are inserted into the ducts for a temporary closure. So since meron tayong ducts kung saan dumadaan yung tears natin, so yun yung isisil ng doctor or lalagyan ng plug para hindi mag uh, para hindi dumaan yung 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 tears natin doon. Instead, it will uh, circulate lang sa mata ng patient para malesen yung uh, symptoms niya ng dry eyes. Collagen or silicon plugs are inserted into the ducts for a temporary closure. Collagen plugs eventually dissolve, but silicon plugs stay in place until they fall out or are removed. So alternatively, the doctor may also use laser to permanently seal the tear ducts if masyadong advanced na yung dry eyes ng patient. Also, yung mga uh, some of the patients may use your over-the-counter eye drops, no? And also, you may advise your patient to sip more water frequently para hindi para hindi masyadong mag-dry mata ng patient at saka yung especially yung mouth ng patient. So, you advise your patient to sip water more frequently and to relieve dry eyes gumamit ng mga eye drops. So, ito yung tinatawag nating uh, plug. 
Yes, nilalagay yan sa may tear duct ng patient para hindi madrain yung kanyang luha. Instead, it will stay here sa mata ng patient to help combat the dryness and also yung yung mga irritants para hindi magstay sa mata ng patient. Lifestyle and home remedies to relieve dry eyes using artificial tears an eye lubricant or both. Avoid sitting in front of a fan or air conditioning vent and wear goggles or protective eyewear when going outdoors. So yung isa nga sa mga ina-advise ng ating mga doctor is if hindi talaga maiwasan na nasa office ka palagi, naka-aircon, so you have to put, uh, parang maglagay ka ng ano, maglagay ka ng mga aquarium or isang baso ng tubig para lang merong uh, moisture na nandyan sa inyong room. Hindi masyadong mag-dry yung skin mo, hindi masyadong mag-dry yung eyes, saka yung mouth. To help with dry mouth, increase fluid intake to stimulate saliva flow. And try using also artificial saliva and using nasal saline spray or oral health. So these products, meron siyang spray or yung mga lozenges, meron din. Yung ating, ano, yung ating nasal saline spray, guys, this can help um, moisturize and clear the nasal passages para so that uh, you can breathe freely through the nose because if you have dry or stuffy nose, this can increase your tendency na, na you will breathe using your mouth or this will increase the tendency that you will use your mouth for breathing. Kaya kailangan hindi clog din yung ating ilong. Okay, so we have here an image of how an autoimmune disorder destroys its own body. 